God. Wow. Good? Wow. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Nice dramatic entrance, Bernie. <laughs> Good morning. My name is Rick Beyer. I am the president of the Ghost Army Legacy Project, an organization uh, founded to preserve and honor the memory of the World War II deception unit known as the Ghost Army. I'm also the producer of the Ghost Army PBS documentary and co-author of the book, The Ghost Army. Apparently, I can only do things that are named The Ghost Army. <laughs> it is my pleasure to welcome you this morning to this event honoring my friend, Ghost Army veteran Bernie Blustein, and the award of the Congressional Gold Medal to the Ghost Army. Please stand, if you can, for the presentation of colors by Charlie Company, 2nd Battalion, 330th Regiment, 95th Training Division, U.S. Army Reserve. Special Troops, Bernie's unit is an honor reserved for a select few recipients. It represents Congress's highest expression of national appreciation for distinguished achievements and contributions by individuals and institutions. It was passed by both houses of Congress and signed into law by President Joseph Biden on February 1st. Congress has awarded 182 Congressional Gold Medals in the last 250 years. The first one of those went to General George Washington, which gives you a good idea of kind of the level of achievement. Others have gone to the Wright brothers, Sir Winston Churchill, boxer Joe Lewis, and Rosa Parks. You're in pretty good company, Bernie. <laughs> The 
first group of World War II soldiers honored with the gold medal was the Navajo Code Talkers in the year 2000. Since then, medals have been awarded to 17 other World War II units or groups, including the Tuskegee Airmen, the WASPs, Women Air Force Service Pilots, the Doolittle Raiders, the OSS, and now finally, the World War II deception units known as the Ghost Army. In the words of the bill, which is no longer just a bill, it is public law 117-85, the United States is eternally grateful to the soldiers of the 23rd Headquarters Special Troops and the 3133rd Signal Service Company for their proficient use of innovative tactics during World War II, which saved lives and made significant contributions to the defeat of Axis powers. And what were those innovative tactics? Let's take a quick look. We were going to be in show business where we set up one night stands and like ghosts disappear. And the mission was to try to be able to take a thousand men and put them in so that 15,000 men could move somewhere else and not be detected. We were told we couldn't tell our wives or anybody about what we did. It was totally secret. It's amazing the fakery that we were able to perpetrate upon the enemy. It was a little bundle of stuff, all compressed before. You opened the bundle, spread the nozzles around, and inflated it. The artillery piece was good, but that M4 tank, that was the beauty. That was a piece of work. Back of my half-track, I tell my children, was the biggest boombox you ever saw, but it played sounds of tanks and activity. They had recordings of building a pontoon bridge or any type of bridge and you could hear them hammering away and swearing and we were turned loose in town go to the pub order some omelets and talk loose you mean we're asking for the enemy to fire on us the answer was yes at that point we all came to the conclusion that this was a suicide outfit and a shell landed in front of us, and then the shell flew over our heads and hit the truck behind us. People probably no more than 20, 30 feet away from me that lost limbs because of shrapnel just falling all over. If you're in the wrong place, you can be dead. If you're in the right place, you can live to be as old as I am. You go up against the best in army there is, and the best group of soldiers, and you can dupe them successfully, you pat yourself on the back. There are German records that show that some of the deceptions were taken, hook, line, and sinker. The 23rd did not win the war single-handedly, but I think it would have cost a lot more American casualties had they not been there. You know you saved lives, you don't know how many you saved, but you know you saved them. They estimated that we saved between 15 and 30,000 lives with our maneuvers. But you know, even if we only saved 15 or 30, it was worth it. One mother or one new bride was spared the agony of putting a gold star in their front window. That's what the 23rd headquarters was all about. The 1,100 men in Bernie's unit uh, conducted 22 battlefield deceptions, playing an important role in securing Allied victory. In the words of an analysis done after the war, rarely, if ever, has there been a group of such a few men which had so great an influence on the outcome of a major military campaign. 
And by the way, the 95th Division, represented by the soldiers in our color guard today, is one of the divisions impersonated by the Ghost Army in World War II. A great connection. Let me say a few words about Bernie. Others will say more. I'll just say that he started as a student at the Cleveland Institute of Art before joining the Army. He served in the 603rd Camouflage Engineers, the visual deception arm of the 23rd Headquarters Special Troops. Correct me if I say anything wrong. Or... <laughs> he was part of the team that made the fake patches, signs, and vehicle stencils used in the special effects deceptions to fool the enemy. In March 1945, Bernie and his comrades set out on their final deception mission. Their goal was to fool the Germans about where American troops would cross the Rhine River. Operation Viersen turned out to be their biggest and most successful operation. That mission alone likely saved thousands of lives. And I know, Bernie, you have very vivid memories of this operation in which you took the field and in which you came perilously close to being hit by enemy artillery. We are thrilled to be able to honor Bernie today as one of the nine surviving veterans of the Ghost Army awarded the Congressional Gold Medal. Now that medal has been officially awarded but not yet minted. So we have no medal in hand, but that is not going to stop us today. Uh, there are a bunch of folks who are actually sitting here waiting for me to stop talking so that they can start making presentations to you, Bernie. And so the first one I'm going to introduce now uh, is really our host here today, uh, that we're thrilled that she could be here, the distinguished president of Harper College, Dr. Avis Proctor. Good morning. Good morning. Thank you, Rich, for your kind introduction. We are so honored to have all of you here with us today to honor Bernie Bluestein and celebrate his wonderful contributions to our country and his legacy at Harvard College. I'm also pleased that your son Keith is here uh, with us today, as well as the families of Ghost Army veterans. Can we have them stand so people can see who they are as well? Any family members of the Ghost Army veterans? <laughs> to acknowledge uh, our state representative, Michelle Mussman. She's here with us today. Uh, we also have <laughs> Yasmin Bancole from Senator Dick Durbin's office with us today. <laughs> and we do anticipate uh, later on uh, in our, our program that Congressman Raja Krishnamurthy will be joining us. And so we want to thank uh, all of our representatives for uh, elected officials for their support of Harper College, our students, and especially our student veterans and military connected families. It's been a pleasure uh, to see how they've demonstrated their support for the college and our students and our community. Thank you all for being an advocate of higher education. Let's give them a round of applause one more time. Bernie, it is such a joy to celebrate your life-saving service to our country as a member of the Ghost Army during World War II, and to see the role that art plays in our country's national security. I'm also grateful to be able to recognize and honor your inspirational educational journey. You used your GI Bill to fund the last two years of art school, which laid the foundation for your career as an industrial designer and business owner. And now for more than 30 years, you've taken art classes at Harper College and demonstrated the power of lifelong learning. And in my time that I, the short time right before we began today, uh, Bernie shared with me that uh, his time here at Harper really extended his life. And that gave me chills to uh, know that uh, that really uh, played a significant role in your being with us here today. So thank you for sharing with that, sharing that with us, Bernie. Supporting our student veterans, is core to our mission. This past academic year, we had 355 student veterans and military affiliated <coughs> students enrolled at Harper. And this summer, we currently have 105 students. If you have been here at Harper for any length of time, Bernie's face is probably familiar uh, to you. And not just because he's taken our classes here since 1989, but also because of the extraordinary bust 
that you may walk by, and it's prominently displayed right outside of our art ex exhibition space. And now, thanks to a generous donor, Bernie's name will become a permanent fixture here in our arts building. As many of you know, As many as you know, some of um, our, the college as well as our foundation, we are committed to recognizing private donors who provide significant support to Harper College. One of the ways in which this recognition may be given is by naming college facilities for major donors. We are fortunate to have a generous donor who created a scholarship for Harper students and was offering a naming opportunity in recognition of her gift. This donor asked if she could actually use her naming recognition to honor Bernie, which the college enthusiastically supported. So you'll see displayed right here the plaque that will be permanently placed in our art building. This donor wishes to remain anonymous, so a little later on in the program, you'll hear more about the special recognition from Harper Professor of Art and Design, Jason Piaf, who, by the way, came by my office uh, to, to talk about, can we have this? Uh, program here today, I said, absolutely, what a privilege it is to uh, bring the community together and recognize Bernie. So Bernie, you are an inspiration to artists, to student veterans, and to anyone who wants to pursue their creative dreams at any age. Thank you for your service, and thank you for making Harper College your second home. Now I would like to introduce the chair of our board of trustees, Chair Pat Stack. pleasure and an honor it is for me to be here today. When the Board of Trustees heard the story of Bernie, um, we all said, we're in. What can we do to honor, honor you? So we are grateful for your service and um, definitely appreciative of the opportunity to be here with you today. Um, we're here to present a resolution that was uh, read aloud and approved by the Board of Trustees at our June meeting. Whereas Bernie Bluestein, a lifelong learner and student who has taken art classes at Harper College for more than 30 years, and whereas he is considered a great mentor and role model for younger students, and whereas Mr. Bluestein's service to the United States Army shows that art was valuable in defending democracy, and whereas his military career and talents as an artist saved lives, and whereas Mr. Bluestein was honored with a Congressional Gold Medal for his service in World War II as a member of the Ghost Army, and whereas he has touched many lives with his kindness, which prompted an anonymous donor to provide resources that will name the sculpture studio in Mr. Bluestein's honor. And whereas Mr. Bluestein believes that sharing of ideas from all people of all ages gives us a broader view of the world, now therefore be it resolved that the Board of Trustees of Harper College honors Bernie Bluestein as a lifelong learner, a cherished Harper student, and for his service to our country. Attested this 15th day of, of July, or actually was it attested the 15th day of June when we approved it in the year 2022. And here it is for you. And we oh, can thank you. Leave it on the table if you don't want to hold it, but um, it's all official. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much. You are more than welcome. Did you want another picture? Oh, okay. I don't get my picture taken very often. You can tell. We'll work on that. Okay. Thank you. Come and put it up here. Sure. Okay. Thank Congratulations you. Congratulations and thank you. Thank for you very much. Time. Oh, my um, the medal is the Congressional Gold Medal, uh, and to pass a Congressional Gold Medal, you need to have two-thirds of the House and two-thirds of the Senate support the passing of the Gold Medal, which is a tricky thing to do in these times, I don't have to tell you. But I'm very pleased that both of uh, Illinois senators were co-sponsors of this bill and were fairly early co-sponsors of this bill. And next up, I'd like to introduce Yasmin Benkole, Outreach Coordinator for Illinois Senator Dick Durbin to make her presentation. Just to introduce myself, it's a pleasure. 
to meet you. Thank you. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Uh, my name is Yasmin Van Kale, and um, as Rick stated, I am here from the office of U.S. Senator Dick Durbin. It's a pleasure to be here with all of you today. Um, I am going to read Senator Durbin's commendation letter for Mr. Bluestein. Dear Mr. Bluestein, I am pleased to have this opportunity to thank and recognize you for your military service in the Ghost Army Tactical Unit in World War II as you celebrate the recent passage of the Ghost Army Congressional Gold Medal Act. The intelligence, courage, and bravery demonstrated by you and the rest of the Ghost Army on the battlefield cannot be overstated. Your efforts in deceiving the enemy undoubtedly saved countless lives, cementing your legacy as an American hero. In addition, your 30-year mentorship of students at Harper College demonstrates your ongoing commitment to our nation and its people. While no words, symbols, or memorials can adequately express our nation's debt to you and all others who have risked their lives to defend our nation's liberties, it is important that we take this opportunity to honor your service to our country. Thank you again for your service to our nation. Please accept my best wishes for your health and happiness in the years ahead. Sincerely, Dick Durbin, United States Senator. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Uh, our next presenter is somebody who may be familiar to you, Bernie. He's your son. <laughs> Keith, where are you hiding? You're right there. Uh, Keith Bluestein uh, is, uh, uh, he, his efforts uh, on behalf of the gold medal were, were really amazing. And I don't get to honor or recognize Keith very much, and because and, uh, all the honor tends to flow towards Bernie. But uh, Keith was incredibly dogged in his efforts as one of many people who lobbied for this bill. Uh, he came to Washington. He worked the halls of Congress. It wasn't something he'd done before, but he learned how to do it and got better at it. Back at home, he used his lunch hour during work to send many emails and made hundreds and hundreds of phone calls to House and Senate offices. He never gave up. He held fundraisers to help raise money for the Ghost Army Legacy Project. He was truly incredible. I know it's very meaningful for Keith. He is here uh, to present a letter from uh, Senator Duckworth. Uh, she could not be here, and her office could not be here today. But Keith, come on up, and you take over. Yeah. Well, thanks everybody for coming out, and uh, it's a pleasure to be here. Uh, this means, uh, this is a historical moment for me in my life. Uh, it's so meaningful. Uh, I have a lot of emotions right now. Uh, uh, just uh, words can't describe how I feel uh, towards my dad. Uh, uh, such a great honor uh, I didn't know about. Um, and uh, wasn't declassified until 1996. And uh, so when I finally found out about it, uh, my mouth dropped. And, uh, and later on, when Rick Beyer uh, you know, told us about everything, uh, it, uh, it caused me to become really involved in, uh, in uh, going lobbying Congress and Senate uh, to achieve this goal of uh, getting uh, these guys that served in the Ghost Army, the Congressional Gold Medal. So I'm gonna read to you a letter from Senator Tammy Duckworth. Uh, Dear Mr. Bluestein, I write to congratulate you on the reception of the Congressional Gold Medal in honor of your service with the 23rd Headquarters Special Troops better known today as the Ghost Army. I want to personally thank you for your service 
to our country as a member of the United States Army. As a fellow veteran, I understand the sacrifices you made and what it means to wear the uniform. Your time served in the 603rd Camouflage Engineers, the Visual Deception Arm of the Ghost Army is a testament of, to your loyalty that all those who serve in uniform share. The contributions and sacrifices you made during your time with the United States Army are invaluable and are a true testament to our nation's values. Your commitment, loyalty, and service to our country are appreciated. It is my privilege to join your family and friends in expressing our gratitude in for your service and congratulations on this well-deserved honor. My very best to you on this special occasion. Sincerely, Senator Tammy Duckworth. Thank you. Thank you, Keith. Thank you, Keith. Thank you. Well, somebody else who was very active in the lobby uh, is our next presenter, Madeline Christensen. Uh, Madeline is the great granddaughter of Ghost Army veteran Stanley Nance. Uh, she met Bernie when she was 14. I'm sure she'll mention that. Uh, she uh, was a very effective member of the lobbying team. She made her first Ghost Army lobbying trip to Washington when she was 15 years old. And she came all the way from Utah today to represent everyone, not me, Bluestein, <laughs> who worked so hard to convince Congress to award this medal. And she's here to present uh, letters from the original sponsors of the bill, Madeline Christensen. Thank you, Rick. Um, Bernie, I am just so happy to be here today to celebrate with you that your efforts in World War II are finally getting the honor they deserve. Um, I remember when I first met you on the Ghost Army tour in 2018, when I was just 14 years old, like Rick said. I was so excited to go on a tour with another Ghost Army veteran, and as we traveled across Europe, it was amazing to see you recognized um, and um, see honored by museums, cemeteries, and historical sites in France, Luxembourg, and Belgium. I remember thinking, how can your service um, be recognized here overseas when even America hasn't? Bernie, today is America's turn. It is an honor to present you uh, with letters from the sponsors of the Ghost Army Congressional Gold Medal Act, Senator Edward Markey of Massachusetts and Representative Annie Custer of New Hampshire. Um, let me read some excerpts from those. First, Representative Custer, you all used your creative talents to save lives and change the course of this country and the world. Your actions are an important part of our nation's history that needs to be remembered. And from Senator Markey, I am proud that your unit's dedication and bravery will now be known by millions of Americans today and for generations. Also, Representative Chris Stewart from my home state of Utah, who was the original House co-sponsor, sends his congratulations as well as his official poem to present to you. During his address to Congress, he said, during our nation's darkest hour, the ghost army did not shy away from the fight. They saved thousands of lives. They stood eye to eye against the access of evil. No one knew of their courageous sacrifice. To this day, they continue to embody 
the ideals of America striving for duty, honor, sacrifice, and courage. These delegates, thank you for your service and are proud to have supported this legislation and thrilled to see you honored. Bernie, as I have gotten to know you, the most impressive thing to me was your humility. You always say that you just did what you were told to do, and you are always too quick to give credit to your fellow comrades, but your personal service in the Ghost Army inspires me. You were about my age when you were first <coughs> in art school and decided to contribute to the war effort using your own unique and powerful talents by signing up for a camouflage class. And you did so well that you were handpicked to serve in this unit we are recognizing today, while overseas amidst painting patches and blowing up tanks. <laughs> you found beauty and hope among destruction and fear through your art, even by creating a beautiful small tea set out of bullet shells. Your story is a prime example of the unique, creative, and non-violent strategies of the Ghost Army. The Ghost Army story to me is amazing, not just because of the impacts to the war, as great as they are, but because of the values and men like you who uphold them. All of these people surrounding you have been inspired by your story. Many inspired enough to push Congress to hear and honor you with the Congressional Gold Medal, including your own son, Keith, who I had the pleasure to lobby with. He was so heartfelt and earnest in meetings and, like Frank mentioned, uncountable hours calling offices and working with many of them who eventually people sponsored the bill due to his efforts. Today, as Rick so well put it, I am here representing those people who worked hard to get you recognized and honored by the United States government. From family members to staff members, we are here to celebrate and honor you. I am so grateful I have had the chance to get to know you from a two-week tour of Europe to visiting you in your home to the Ghost Army exhibit opening in the National World War II Museum in New Orleans, where I had the chance to introduce you to my great-grandfather. Your story has been an inspiration to me, and I am so happy to see you honored today. Thank you for your service. Thank you, thank you, thank you. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> Gotta get the branding in. <laughs> All right, thank you, Madeline. Bernie, it's like Christmas. Everybody wants to give you something. Wow. I know. Uh, and one of the people who wants to give you something uh, couldn't be here today, but he's the President of the United States. Um, and he asked me to give you... There it goes. Rick's breaking the clap. Okay. Sorry. Sorry. Uh, he asked me to give you this. Okay, he didn't actually ask me himself, but uh, uh, somebody who worked for him did. Uh, I believe it contains a letter from the president and a copy of the signed bill and some other stuff, but it's sealed, and I certainly don't have the nerve to open the sealed envelope from the president of the United States <laughs> to Bernie Lustein. So, Bernie, I'm just going to give you the sealed envelope. You can open it now, later, or you can just preserve it unopened, but I would suggest <laughs> opening it at some point. From the White House and the President of the United States. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Now, you know, we usually give the President uh, uh, the last word. Uh, today we're going to do things a little differently. We're still waiting on Representative Krishnamurthy, who will be here, will either join us at the end in this room or after we adjourn for refreshments across the hall. But before we do anything else, you heard mention of a special honor being accorded uh, to Bernie. And so we're going to bring up here a person to, uh, to uh, present that honor to him, his uh, longtime friend and sculpture professor, Jason Pia. Jason, come on.
Hey, buddy. <laughs> How you doing? So far, so good. Have fun. Hi, everybody. <laughs> Thanks for coming, everyone. As Dr. Proctor mentioned earlier in the program, a generous anonymous donor has chosen to name the Harper Sculpture Studio in Bernie's honor. Going forward, our studio will now be known as the Bernie Blue Stein Sculpture Studio. Thank you. Um, this sign right here, displayed here, will be hung outside of room L130, which is the sculpture studio, and Bernie's legacy will be known by every Harper student, employee, faculty, and community member who passes by this room. Bernie has taken art classes at Harper since 1989, when he was just 65. <laughs> In those 33 years, Bernie has taken nearly every class he offered, including painting, figure drawing, design, ceramics, and printmaking. But over the past 20 years or so, he has focused primarily on sculpture. For those of you who have not gotten to see any of Bernie's sculptures, uh, many of them are figurative, but the vast majority of his sculptures are abstract variations on the form of a needle. Bernie says that the needle is a meaningful form for him because his father was a tailor and his mother was a seamstress. I'm sure that as the sculpture professor, I may be biased, but I think our sculpture studio is one of the most impressive facilities in our department. It's a large wood shop and metal shop that we use to teach classes in three-dimensional design, bronze casting, jewelry making, and of course sculpture. My colleagues and I are thrilled to have the sculpture studio named for Bernie. This is a unique honor reserved for only the most special people within the college community. In our department, this is only the second space to be named. The first was the ceramic studio, named by our dear friend Martha Bell, or her husband, Glenn Reeser, who was a student in the ceramics program for many, many years. Glenn was also a good friend of Bernie's and classmate of Bernie's. And I think it's fitting that from here on, the two of them will be honorary neighbors. <laughs> I've been asked to read some thoughts that the donor shared about why they wished to name the sculpture studio for Bernie. And I'm honored to do so. Here's what the donor wrote. Bernie is a great mentor and role model. His service to the United States is particularly special to me because it showed that art was, a value, was valuable in defending democracy. Usually people think of art as an optional luxury, but his art contribution actually saved lives. Bernie has been, for many years, a role model for younger students. I think that many people think of community colleges as being a place for young people, but adults and seniors add a special dimension to classes and discussions. The sharing of ideas of all people, of all ages, gives a broader view of the world. <laughs> this donor, who has taken art classes at Harper as an adult student, asked me to share what I've seen regarding, regarding Bernie's interactions in the studio with other students. So, I've taught at Harper since 1997. Bernie has been in every single sculpture class I have taught in those 25 years. <laughs> and he expects to be there uh, this year as well. He likes to tell students, new students, on the first day <laughs> that my class is very hard and someday maybe he'll pass it. <laughs> Bernie's presence in the class is very unique. He is part mentor, part role model, and part critic. The younger students see him working constantly, in and out of class. This work ethic is a great influence on them. But he doesn't work silently in the corner. He sits right in the middle of the room, <laughs> talking with other students, sharing ideas and tips, and genuinely showing interest in their work. My favorite time with Bernie in class is when we have critiques. Right, Bernie? Right. <laughs> People say that I might be a bit too honest, but Bernie is brutally honest. 
his most common statement in a critique is, I don't get it. <laughs> <laughs> Bernie's long career as a product designer and his love of craft and craftsmanship make him super critical of any work that is overly conceptual. This is not a bad thing. When Bernie says, I don't get it, he is beginning a dialogue where he is challenging the student to explain their ideas. This is so valuable and has led to so many great conversations over the years. Countless students have benefited from Bernie's wisdom and experience over the years, and many of them are here today. Finally, our donors shared, and lastly, Bernie is a very good sculptor. He is a talented and genuinely kind person, and I am happy to have met him. This plaque will be hung outside of the Bernie Bluestein Sculpture Studio next week. It will be my and my colleagues' honor to share Bernie's story and his legacy with future generations of students who come and work in his studio. Thank you. You saw that right there? Uh -huh. <laughs> We remember Bernie and his fellow soldiers and honor them because, as you have heard, they used creativity, illusion, performance, and art to fool enemy, to fool the enemy save lives, and help win the war. 500 years ago, the great political philosopher Machiavelli wrote these words, though fraud in all other actions be odious, yet in matters of war, it is laudable and glorious. And I do love that phrase, laudable and glorious. I do not know a better way to describe what you guys did. So Bernie Bluestein, Thank you for your laudable and glorious service in World War II and here at Harper College. Now, I want to give um, Bernie equal time. I know he's not going to use all of it. But uh, uh, I know he's not, he doesn't necessarily love uh, uh, speaking. I'm going to try to hand this microphone to you, Bernie, but he's got a second microphone attached to it, which I'm going to try to preserve somewhere the television crew is saying, oh my god, don't break that. <laughs> and I'll hand the microphone to you. Don't talk too long, OK? <laughs> yeah, I'm going to hold it down there, OK? There we go. As you all know, I'm not the most wordy person in the world. I guess my better aptitude is in art. But I do have a few words to say. I'd just like to thank everybody for all these accolades. I'd like to thank a lot of people, a lot of individuals. I can't. There's so, there's so many of them, every one of you people, every one of you people who've touched my life, my life, has influenced me, meant a great deal in me being where I am today. And I appreciate having the association with all of you. I want to God bless you for all of that. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. This is the president's letter.
Do you want me to read it? Uh, sure. This is a letter from the President. Dear Mr. Bluestein, on behalf of a grateful nation, thank you for your heroic service with the 23rd Headquarters Special Troops. The Ghost Army's unique and highly distinguished service in conducting deception operations in Europe during World War II saved countless American and allied lives and helped win the war. Your service in the 603rd Camouflage Engineers will never be forgotten. You and your fellow Ghost Army service members demonstrated the bravery, skill, and dedication that continue to make America's armed forces the best in the world. Our nation is forever indebted to you and your family for your sacrifices. May God bless you and your family, and may God protect our troops. Sincerely, Joe Biden. And this is a, actually a picture of him signing the bill. Oh, yeah. doing? <laughs> doing good. <laughs> you okay? You hanging in? Yeah. Okay. And that's the, um, that's the, that's the president's signature on the bill. Right. Right there. So. Right. Nancy Pelosi and Patrick Leahy. Wow. Let me tell you guys one more story that's going to fill the last minute here. You, you know, are you, are you bored? Come on, I'm doing the best I can. <laughs> you have to run out to the bathroom, I get it. But uh, some of you know this story. It actually involves uh, 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 another member of the Ghost Army, but it is, it is truly one of my uh, favorite Ghost Army stories. Uh, and you know, they worked with these inflatable tanks, burning with these inflatable tanks, other like soldiers did. Uh, one of the first times when they were trying to set up these inflatable tanks uh, in uh, France, they had a. Um, <laughs> Uh, 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 they, they, they were trying to keep the civilians away, but somehow a few civilians came in and got through the perimeter, and what they thought they saw was four American GIs lifting up a 40-ton tank and <laughs> it around. Uh, and the soldier who, who, who told me the story, who actually painted a painting that my friend Rob Mayer owns, and which is at the Illinois Holocaust Memorial exhibit about the ghost story, um, uh, Arthur Shilstow now he had to shoo those guys away and he said uh, as he did so they, were, he said, they weren't looking at me they were looking over my shoulder he said and, and they, asked, they looked at me they were looking for answers and finally I just said the Americans are very strong <laughs> <laughs> so Bernie is one of the very strong Americans who's, who's here with us today uh, so we had very early and enthusiastic support from the office of Representative Raja, Raja Krishnamurthy. Now, I practiced that so many times, and then I got in the moment here, and I had a little, <laughs> little panic. But uh, 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 Congressman uh, Krishnamurthy's office, uh, he first co-sponsored this bill back in 2019. His office has always been enthusiastic and supportive. It's why I was so willing to stretch for a while to wait for you to get here. And so I'll stop now and abandon the stage and introduce Congressman Roger Krishnamurthy. Good morning. Good morning. It's an honor to be with you, and as I like to say, it's an honor to be any place they can pronounce my name right. <laughs> so thank you for that pronunciation. It's, it's funny, when I first ran for office, I, I introduced myself in uh, Chicago. I said, hi, my name is Raja Krishna Murthy. And the person looking right back at me in Chicago said, Roger Christian Murphy. <laughs> <laughs> And then it's like, I didn't know the Irish made it to India. <laughs> so in any case, 
it's wonderful to be with you, uh, and thank you so much for waiting for me. I actually uh, just came from a, a Vietnam uh, veterans pinning ceremony uh, for uh, Native American veterans. Um, and so I came all the way from there here as fast as I could, and so I'm so uh, pleased to be here, and it's an honor. Um, I think you probably all know Mr. Bluestein's story, and um, I don't need to um, tell you uh, how, how privileged it is for us uh, to be able to award Mr. Bluestein and all of the Ghost Army veterans the Congressional Gold Medal. This is a big deal in Washington, D.C. It takes two-thirds of each of the House of Representatives as well as the U.S. Senate to have this particular uh, uh, distinction bestowed on anyone. And as you know, it's hard to get two-thirds of anybody anywhere in Washington <laughs> to agree on anything. And so this was a no-brainer. And so it was my honor to be able to uh, help shepherd this legislation through two presidential administrations and almost four years to have it uh, finally bestowed on Mr. Bluestein. So Thank congratulations. You. Thank you. Um, along with that, I actually also had the honor to enter into the congressional record um, the following entry uh, to commemorate this award to Mr. Bluestein. If you would allow me, I'd like to just uh, tell you what I said. I said, Madam Speaker, today I wish to honor the distinguished service of Bernie Bluestein, a resident of Schaumburg, Illinois, and of my district, who is one of nine veterans of the Ghost Army, an elite U.S. military unit during World War II, still with us today. During the war, the Ghost Army operated covertly, deploying tactics such as inflatable tanks, the use of sound effects, radio deception, and impersonation to gain an upper hand on the enemy by concealing the strength and location of American troops. In June 1945, the unit returned home after having served in four U.S. armies throughout England, France, Luxembourg, Belgium, Holland, and Germany. There is no doubt that the Ghost Army's efforts, while not officially declassified until 1996, were critical to our military success in turning the tide of war in Europe. It is estimated that the brave missions undertaken by the Ghost Army saved around 30,000 American lives, and Mr. Bluestein's service was absolutely heroic. And Illinois' 8th Congressional District is incredibly proud to see him awarded the Congressional Gold Medal earlier this year. Mr. Bluestein has, however, done much more in his life in addition to his exemplary service as a soldier. Since returning home, he has become a lifelong learner, enrolling in classes here at Harper College for more than 30 years and finishing art school. This year, at 98 years old, he is fulfilling his lifelong dream of learning to sculpt by taking <laughs> classes here at Harper. Madam Speaker, I want to recognize the tremendous sacrifice and accomplishments of this humble man from Schaumburg, Illinois. <clears throat> He's a distinguished man. Thank you. He represents the values of intelligence, integrity, service, and character that make our country exceptional and a beacon to the world. Now, let me just tell you one uh, quote that uh, <clears throat> as we were researching you, we were looking for apt quotations that. Uh, Describe your life. John Adams once said, he studied, <clears throat> he studied politics and war so that his sons could study commerce and science and his, <clears throat> his grandchildren could study art. Art, in one man, he's done all of that. So, on behalf of a uh, grateful America, I present you with this congressional record entry. Oh, thank you very much. And thank you for your service. Thank, thank you, you so much.
Thank you. Thank you very much. We're done. Okay. Uh, we have refreshments uh, across the hall in the dining room, and uh, we're going to bring Bernie there. If you want to get a photo with Bernie or chat with Bernie, I would ask you to do it there so that we've got a couple of nice backdrops for photos and such. And Bernie will be there in a few minutes. So thank you very, very much, everybody, for coming today and for honoring Bernie Bluestein. We so appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.